Activated charcoal infused toothpaste is the hottest thing on the market right now. This is how everybody, all your faves in TV, your Instagram models are keeping their teeth shiny white after they get that drug dealer scammer money and go over to uh columbia and get their teeth done nevertheless baby i'm the plug if your teeth need a hug get this activated charcoal infused toothpaste called lucida drop down in the description box below and click the link to purchase this product iyama fix my life with lunel baby i'm here to let y'all know lunel is one of my good girlfriends and i was so scared to watch this episode because i said i'm gonna hate to have to read this bitch and we don't be friends no more. But luckily, my sister fell into the gap and got with the program. But that's a lot for us to talk about. Wanna talk about it? Here you go. Nessa girl, I don't think I've ever shared this information with y'all, but I have a special place in my heart for female comedians. From the time I was a little boy watching Comic View in middle school and elementary school and Deaf Comedy Jam and all those things, I've always gravitated towards some more Lunel, Laura Hayes, uh, 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 Coco Brown, Montana, Chocolate, Cheryl Underwood, People like that, a Melanie Camacho, Adele Givens, I've always gravitated to them. I don't know if it was the black woman in my mama or what, or if it was the black woman in me, bitch, that always made me gravitate towards them. So when I uh, met Lunell, I first met Lunell on Candy Coated Nights, and then in the condo building that I lived at in Atlanta, she was downstairs staying on the hotel side having... Um, breakfast or lunch one time she saw me across called me over we chatted it up and we've been friends ever since so when i found out she was going to be on fix my life i was a little nervous because you know this type of banter can really fuck up a relationship if you got to get a bitch together but i'm here to say i'm pleased that this is one of those episodes of beyond the fix my life where my friendship with Lunel will be able to remain intact because i'm not gonna have to cuss her ass out now i will say this um Lunell got it started early when she was going back and forth with Iyanla. Iyanla was trying to tell her, you know, could it be possible this and could it be possible that? And you know, Lunell was like, no. <laughs> she was like, no, bitch. No, it can't be possible. I don't understand how it could be possible. I'm not trying to hear what it is you got to say. Uh, and, and it was that one particular scene where I forgot exactly what it was that happened. Oh, Lunell was speaking about her mother giving away her last child, which was her, after her father had been killed while Lunell was in utero. And Lunell was holding on to basically that her mother did not fight for her or give her her all. And Iyanla was trying to get Lunell to explain that could it be possible to understand that it could be possible that your mother just did not have the bandwidth with all what was going on and Lunell was just not trying to hear it. Coupled with the fact that Mama Hale went upstairs and was sitting in a little waiting area while Iyanla was working with her daughter and just got, got all impatient on the people. Now, now I'm not gonna lie to you. I was sitting down watching the TV and I kind of got upset with Lunell because I'm like, bitch, as long as your ass don't work in television and in movie production, you know that it's a game of hurry up and wait. It's a game of hurry up and wait. I had a mentor tell me one time, because I never forget, I came off a set for something, and I was complaining about how long I was just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. And my mentor told me at the time, she said, you bring Brooks an iPad and tablet. She says, it doesn't matter if you are uh, on set doing your lines or if you're just sitting still. Those people have paid you for your time. They paid you for your time. You see what I'm saying? So whether you actually doing something or sitting in the corner, they own that time. It's theirs. Um, and so I was like, Lunell, you too season in the game to be up here complaining and adding extra layer of complication to this process. 
Then when, you know, Lunell was complaining with the producers or whatever, and they brought her down to eat Yamba, they went on to make this correlation between um, Lunell being up there waiting and her being in jail in the time. And I don't know, like, I was looking at that shit and I wasn't buying it. It felt like a fucking reach. But I'm going to tell you something. This, to me, was a very... It was an important episode of Iyana Fix My Life, but it wasn't as eventful as some of the other Fix My Lives have been. Uh, it, it didn't seem like the issues that needed to be fixed within their situation were super, 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 super toxic and deep, and which is fine. We don't need a whole host of broken people. I will say this. This is the first time in Fix My Life history that I've watched Fix My Life and felt like Iyana was making TV. I did, you know, for the most part, Iyanla loves to say, you know, I'm not here to make TV, I'm here to, to fix people, or minister, or preach, or whatever her little thing is, I'm paraphrasing. This was the first time I felt like Iyanla was making TV. It kind of made me uncomfortable, because when it came to Iyanla speaking with Lunell's daughter, Miss Donnell, it felt like she was coaching her into a lot of what she was saying, and then you could tell that they were hell-bent on tying everything that was going on into this mask situation. And yes, because that's your mask. And that's your mask. And you wear this mask. And your daughter sees this, but you have this mask. I'm like, okay, girl, stop it with these masks, honey. Like, we get it. It's a mask thing going on. She's on stage. Blah, blah, blah. She's got a mask theme going on. We get it. Um, let me dissect Lunell for a minute, uh, for a moment. I want to say that I 100% relate to Lunell um, being the funny friend. And I can tell you in my own personal life, when you are the funny friend, that tends to be the only space you occupy in other people's lives. Like, they tend to to uh, not see you as a person, and not that they're doing it purposely. Let me put that out there. Not that they're doing it purposely, because oftentimes you train people how to treat you. Many times we enter the relationship as the funny friend, because that at times is our mask. But as you begin to occupy that space in other people's lives and fill that void of bringing joy in their lives, they lose sight of the fact that you need nurturing as well. You know, I, I can tell you a lot of my long-standing friendships, not my most intimate ones, not the two or three people who know me at my core, but all my other, let me say, second phase relationships, the other 30 people who insulate me and the three or four that know me most intimately, um, they don't ask me questions about my love life. They don't ask me questions about my career. They don't ask me questions about my family. They don't ask me how I'm doing mentally or emotionally. It's really a take. It's a take, 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 take. It's a, my man just left me, he cheating, make me laugh. My child got leukemia, make me laugh. I need to borrow some money, oh yeah, make me laugh. You know what I'm saying? So I completely related to Lunell when she said, people uh, don't know me. They don't see me. And you know, for a while, <clears throat> for a while, I'm not going to lie to you, I found peace and solitude in people not knowing me or not seeing me. But then after a while, you get older, you get seasoned, your emotional needs change. You'd be like, well, damn, it would be good for somebody to know me as intimately as I know them. And I have fostered in a, over the, my years a lot of one-way relationships where I know people very well, but they don't know me. Nevertheless, um, <clears throat> something that was interesting, right? Um, you know, it, it's very important, black people, that we kind of get the wealth up in our community so we can begin to nurture our children and, 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 and raise our children from a place of love and not from a place of survival. Because when I was looking at uh, Lunell's daughter just talk about things like um, her mom not being there because Lunell was working, my best friend happened to be sitting on the sofa with me. Um, and he was very upset. He was like, see, this right here is why I don't want to have no fucking ungrateful kids. He was like, and then his words was like, 
She act like Lunell put her in a fucking foster home. You was with your daddy and your grandma while your mama went out and worked so your ass could live a good goddamn life. What more do you want? You can't have it all. And it's funny because I feel like more of us than not can actually relate to that sentiment. Like you wasn't raped, you was full, you was fed, you was clothed, you was in a loving environment with your grandmother and your father. If you can't be with your damn daddy, where can you be? While mommy was out working and 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 on the flip side of things, look, you went to college with no debt. And it's like, damn, and I can get how her complaints can come off as uh ungrateful to people who grew up with nothing or grew up in a household where survival was the driving force. Um, you know, but as we move forward further from slavery, further from the Jim Crow South, further from segregation, as we begin to get more footing in the world, we're starting to realize that there is a lot of psychological damage that comes with being raised from a place of survival and not a place of love, so her feelings were very valid, um, but it was just hard um, for both parties to understand. I definitely think that Lunell hit a breakthrough because all in all, everything she was doing, she was doing for her and her daughter. I mean, shit, bitch, we all need money. 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 We go to college to make money. We go to work to make money. We sell pussy and ass to make money. We all need money. They say money don't make all your problems go away, but bitch, it'll make most of them go away. Okay? How many, how many of y'all on the line right now? Money will make most of your problems go away. And the ones that it won't make go away, it'll make them tolerable. Okay? I said that, bitch. That's scripture. Um... Lost my train of thought, being a comedian. Um, nevertheless, I think Lunell hit a breakthrough when she realized that she had put a lot of her hardness on her daughter. And it broke me, and I kind of, tears welled up in my eyes when Lunell said something along the lines of, uh, it pains me to think that I hurt my baby. Because that was never her intention. Her intention was to go out there and get this money so she can give her baby the best life she possibly could. Um, and, you know, she fell short in the love and affection area. But I'm here to tell you, as of somebody who grew up in a working class black environment, I'm willing to bet that that's most of y'all who watching me. That's most of you alls story, too. You know, our people did the best they had with the little bit that they, that they were given and that they could acquire. Um, so... For someone like my best friend who was watching this, he was very trivial because he was basically looking at Lunell's daughter like, bitch, you ain't been through nothing that ain't nobody else went through. You, you ought to be glad you ain't sitting up here talking about somebody raped you and you was hungry and you was homeless and you was on drugs and all that. And he kind of got a point. You know what I'm saying? Um, but um, I loved that they were able to talk. You know, and another and another thing that I want to point out is, um, and again, I, I can relate to this. Parents, I know it may be hard, but you have got to stop getting so angry when your children express themselves. And black people, we have got to let go of this thing that we do to our children, which is um, we think that them expressing anything or giving any type of pushback is disrespect. Shut up. Don't talk back to me. I don't care what you got to say. When you get your own damn house, you can do what you want to do. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Do you don't pay no bills around here? I'm going to tell you what that does to somebody psychologically. It shrinks them. And it makes them feel as if they are not worth it and who they are is not important. Very funny story. And I'm going to get up off the line. I'm not going to hold you. My second job outside of college, I work with this Cuban woman. Her name is Carmen. She was bad, bad bitch. Carmen was a sex owner. Used to walk through the office with all the designer clothes on, all the men and stuff, wanted her. She was just exuded sex. Nevertheless, you would think that this woman was just the most magical unicorn on earth. She didn't really talk to many people in the office, and one day she and I went to lunch. And I forgot how we got to talking about family upbringings, but Carmen said to me that she grew up in a household where she was always told to shut up. 
She was never allowed to voice her opinion. She was ordered, she was never allowed to have an opinion about anything. Her parents were very strict. It's their way or the highway. And she said that later in her adult life, that translated into her letting men do anything they want to do to her, run over her, and she would never speak up for herself because she was conditioned to believe that how she felt, what she thought, and what she had to say did not matter. And it does the same thing in children. It showed up in me having a hard time um, defending myself against authority, authority figures. You know, if my boss did something that was incorrect or if my boss was just doing something and I thought that there could be a slightly better, more efficient way I could do it, I had trouble verbalizing that until I would get so frustrated that I would boil over and now I'm getting a write-up at work. Those things have lasting psychological effects on our children and we gotta stop this shit that we got from grandma and them in, 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 in middle of fucking Georgia and Alabama that when a child says something back to you that it's back talk and you feel disrespected because you pay the bills like we have got to cut that ignorant slave shit out we have got to because it is fucking up our children Big time. Do y'all wonder why they get out here in the world and be angry and be prostitutes and be all kind of other stuff? It's because you told them to shut up too many damn times. They did not have an outlet to voice their opinion. There is a way. And you know, the, the sad part about it is I'm preaching, but you can't even teach your damn kids how to verbalize their opinions and feelings as kids. Because hell, you about to know how to do yours as an adult. And that's something else that we have got to work on. How to put words, soft, gentle, compassionate, loving, concise, direct words to our emotions. And letting people know that it is okay to express any emotion. It's just about how you do it. Any emotion against anyone. It's just about how you do it. Your children have the right to be mad at you. They have the right. It's an emotion. It's a feeling. It's about how they express it. There's nothing wrong with a child saying, Mommy, I'm mad because you won't let me have a chocolate chip cookie. And in your mind, you're like, you're not getting no goddamn cookie. And that's okay. And then you simply have to explain to them, Johnny, you cannot have a cookie because I need you to grow up and be big and strong and this is going to ruin your appetite. That is why you can't have a cookie. Not because mommy is being mean, but see, a lot of us have been conditioned to take giving our children explanations mean that we're relegating ourselves to a child. And you ain't finna run me. You ain't finna run me. That shit is so fucking ignorant. It is so fucking ignorant. And it is time that we take all the ignorance out of parenting and it's time that we flip that coin we 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 pull pull everything we've learned from previous generations and analyze it for what it is we have got to understand that much of the tradition that we have grown up in was birthed out of struggle strife ignorance and lack of education be willing to unlearn some shit to learn it right there's no excuses in 2020 nevertheless Fix My Life, this was a very good episode, especially for those who struggle in the areas of parenting. And I am glad that Lunell was open to the process. And I am glad that she and her daughter got some healing in this process. And I definitely loved that last part with Sherry Shepard and Kim Whitley and uh, whoever else that was on the thing, whoever's name I'm forgetting, came through the show. Lunell, you do have a support system, sister. You are loved. You're loved by them. And friend, sis, you are loved by me too. And I'll call y'all later. Be sure to like and subscribe. Bang! And stop talking to your kids any type of way. But you'll let that nigga talk to you any kind of way. And won't say nothing to his ass. Dumb bitch.